Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the Laboratory for Paleoclimatology at the University of Ottawa and also with the Department of Geography and Environmental Systems at Carleton University where I'm teaching a first year physical geography course to about 100 students, which is my first um, appointment at uh, Carleton. So recently I attended a talk on food security, climate change and oceans as a source of food by B Dr. Jake Rice, an emeritus professor um, with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. And I talked about the first few slides in my previous video. So I will continue um, here where I left off before. So as I said before, we're in a global climate change emergency, food supply will be hit the hardest and it will affect the most people and it will be how a large part of the public who don't have their eyes and ears open, don't pay attention to the world around them too much um, due to job commitments, etc., carrying on with their own lives, will suddenly be hit by the sledgehammer of global food shortages um, with uh, escalating food prices. So, so the uh, keynote talk here was on fisheries and food security. There were many um, dualities in this conference. So climate change and global food security, climate change and biodiversity con conservation, climate change and fisheries, fisheries and global food security, fisheries and biodiversity, etc. all the different combinations. What are considered solutions to problems in one setting are considered sources of problems in others. So the goal of this conference was to open the discussion on the intersection of these issues which are crucial to humanity in the near-term future. So the sources of this are some papers um, by Rice and Rice is the um, is his presentation, right? Jake Rice. So so some of his previous work, um, the Food and, and Agricultural Organization and the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development reports on climate change and food security, the latest AR5 report from the IPCC on adaption and mitigation, and some other talks in the symposium. And there's been no breakthroughs in, to make the situation better um, in, in this conference. Lots of things discussed. So the scale of the challenge of meeting the food security needs from the ocean um, is, was outlined. The scale of the ecosystem challenge of meeting the food security challenges in the oceans. Alternatives that could confront both. So marine mariculture, which is marine aquaculture, balanced harvesting, different types of harvesting scenarios for, for, the, for the fish, the marine life, food security, the oceans and trade, um, and the capacity of governance to find pathways that deal with the whole challenge. Okay, so holistic or whole system um, approaches. So the scale of the challenge um, is enormous, um, and we're making it much worse by just continuing to have large population growth. So right now, the rate of population growth on the globe is about 1.4% per annum. It's exponential growth. Every morning when you wake up, there are 240,000 extra people on the planet. That's birth minus death. That's extra mouths to be fed. So this is a population increase in billions from 1950 projected to 2050. In the world, we're looking at maybe 9 billion by this time frame. In less developed states, um, there's 8 billion. So 8 of that 9 billion is in less developed states. Um, the percentage of people in coastal areas is expected to increase from less than 50% to greater about 70%. And as we know from a previous talk, we can expect maybe five to 10 feet of sea level rise by 2050. So that is going to move people away from the coast, um, contrasting the natural tendency of people to move towards the coast. 70% will be in urban areas and mega cities um, under, uh, in this projection by, by 2050. 
So this is clearly not uh, sustainable, but let's look at the, what, it, what it means in terms of food supply. Um, the World Health Organization Human Nutritional Requirements talk about the calories. The calorie needs of the population are met largely from grains and vegetables, and protein is from grains, livestock, and fish. Fish provide more than 1.5 billion people with at least 20% of their non-grain protein. In poorer island and coastal states, fish provide 50% or more of the total non-grain protein, and they also provide essential micronutrients and amino acids. Individual requirements for the protein vary with age and gender. If you assume a 60 kilogram adult, you know, younger, um, would be less um, requirements but more per kilogram. So you basically need 3.65 times 10 to the 8th tons of dietary protein by 2050 for this population increase that was that is projected. So are fish the solution? Some people think so. So if we look at the protein required then the best cereal production line would be here. This is the best cereal line production with climate change dipping down, um, leading us to a shortfall um, by say 2030. Total fish protein is to here right now. Where is it going in the future? Can it cover the shortfall? So these are trends from the Food and agri Agricultural Organization. Um, and this is the ocean, um, ocean farming and aquaculture um, reports that come out from this group, 2016. So what you can see is, you can see the orange is capture production. So fish captured, caught through normal methods. And you can see that from about 1990 onwards, it flattens at about this level here, which is about this is 80, that's 100, so it's about 95 uh, million tons. And the blue, or the gray, is increasing. This is aquaculture production, and it takes us up to about 165 or so million tons. So this is a large percentage of the uh, total, and it's growing, and it's covering up for the shortfall. Or it, it, it's... Um, providing lots of protein. So 2016, capture fisheries stabilized about 85 to 90 million metric tons. Aquaculture, about 60 to 70 million metric tons, and it's increasing. 33 of that million metric tons is used for oil and animal feed. The rest is consumed. Now by 2050, if fish stays at 20% of global dietary protein, that's 20% of 365, the demand, which is about 70 million metric tons more fish from fish is required by this time frame. This, if it has to replace decreasing grain from increased temperatures and, so cause, and droughts in places and floods in other places, reducing grain yields, then it'll have to be more than this. With most of the population growth in parts of the world where fish is a greater percent of protein, it has to be even more. So is there scope to increase the capture fisheries by 70 million metric tons? The report concluded that 100 was unsustainable when it was reached in 1990s. It's suggesting that 90 million metric tons could possibly be stable. Um, if we deal with sequential over exploitation of stocks. That's like fishing out one type of fish, getting all the big fish, and then that collapses, and then moving to another species, collapsing, moving to another species. This, if this is avoided, or if measures are actually limiting catches at levels that are allowing recovery, um, then that could be sustainable. But um, looking at three stocks, up 300 fish stocks, different species up to 2015, Two-thirds of those reached record low spawning biomass within the last 20 years, but three-quarters of those stocks are trending upward or were trending upward. Uh, I don't know if it's still happening. So 90 million metric tons 
um, may be sustainable, maybe a sustainable boundary. Is there scope to increase the culture fisheries? What opportunities are there to intensify coastal mariculture and freshwater pond culture? So there was a, a report done in June of 2014. There was a biannual committee on fisheries. This was the previous a uh, few years ago. And basically the main findings of this study said that in the last three decades, farmed fish production has increased 12 times at an average annual growth of over 8%, making it the fastest growing food production sector. So this is aquaculture, fish, fish farms. It's now widely agreed that the foreseen future increase in demand for fish will have to be satisfied through aquaculture production. It can't be done just through normal catch. Also, aquaculture fish, they convert more of their feed into their body mass than terrestrial animals. So if you look at the amount of feed required to get beef versus pork versus fish, the feed required is five times more greater for beef, three times greater for pork versus fish um, being the stand unit one. However, and chicken, by the way, is slightly, poultry is slightly um, under one. So uh, poultry is slightly more efficient. However, aquatic animal production systems also have a lower carbon footprint per kilogram compared to terrestrial animal production. Nitrogen and phosphorus emissions from aquaculture are much lower compared to beef and pork, although they're slightly higher for those of, of uh, poultry. So there are advantages to aquaculture. So whether the scale of the operation is neutral or not with respect to food security and nutrition is less clear. Um, some claims are that medium scale enterprises are more effective for addressing poverty reduction and food security. However, 70 to 80% of aquaculture production so far is from small scale operations along coastlines. So there are concerns about um, the sustainability of aquaculture. It also affects, depends on how it's done. If it's done in a non-ecological fashion, then the waste is dropping to the ocean floor, harming life on the ocean floor. Um, so the era of severe environmental problems has passed and aquaculture is on the road to becoming more environmentally sustainable. This was their conclusion. Um, and as more space is being used for aquaculture, there's more and more conflicts um, in regions where fisheries, catch fisheries, are already established. And also, fish diseases are a constant threat to production because we have monocultures as for livestock production, as for farming. And the use of antibiotics and chemicals in these systems is a huge source of concern, especially since these things are in the ocean and will get out to, um, out to uh, you know, fish that are, that are not in the aquaculture environment. No project projections on how much expansion there can be. Most of the information is on large and medium scale where most of the actual operations are small scale. So the ecosystem effects of fishing, this is a large field, a lot of research done in this. Um, there's these biodiversity targets. Um, at this uh, HE uh, Japan conference, um, I think 2011, 2012 or something. And it talked about bycatches, which is a huge problem of all species um, in present fishing, impacts of, on the seabed and associated biota. And this is from these large trawlers, which these huge um, 20 mile long nets that are dragged along the bottom, scouring the bottom, harming, harming uh, the seafloor. Uh, special attention to endangered species, vulnerable habitats, and then the effects on ecosystems are also being studied. But most countries ha uh, have very little ability to, or, or desire to report their progress or lack of progress. So um, I'm, going to, um, I'm going to stop here and I'll continue this in another video. So thank you for your attention.